Hi, welcome to SBR Sports Picks. I'm Peter Loshak. Today is Thursday, June 22nd, and this is the show that uh, we do every Thursday where we update my record and we take a look ahead to the uh, to the upcoming series in uh, in, in MLB uh, over the weekend. And uh, usually, you know, that my guest here is uh, is uh, Drew Martin, but Drew Martin uh, is not available today. So Donnie Wrightside is going to be the guest today. Donnie Wrightside, thanks so much for joining us. A lot of people speak very highly of you when it comes to uh, MLB handicapping. Do you think those people... Uh, uh, those people's assessment of your MLB handicapping in general are accurate? I would hope so out there. Try to be as accurate as possible out here. Good to be with you today, Pete. I was out, you know, out of the office a little bit today. Got the tap on the right shoulder like I'm coming up from AAA to Major League Baseball. <laughs> let's have some fun today. All right. Yes, let's have some fun, Donnie Wrightside. For one thing we do in this show is we uh, update my record, which in the beginning of the uh, of the season was, was awesome, but uh, has taken a turn for the worse recently. Uh, today I had a great call, a winner with the over in the Texas-Toronto game. Also had a crappy call with a loser in, uh, the, C in the St. Louis game, St. Louis, did that line strike you as a little bit weird that St. Louis with the Martinez starting was that low of a road favorite and then it didn't even get bet up that high when it turned out that Philly was sitting a few of their bats, a few of their better bats in their lineup and it still didn't get yeah, bet yeah. up that high? Yeah, looking at that game overall, I mean, we've talked about it a lot, Jeff and I, on the late night on campus and the right side of campus. I mean, Sharps like to bet the Philadelphia Phillies like they were betting the Cleveland Browns over football season. <laughs> For me, in the right mind, I don't care how sharp you are right now. I'm a huge Phillies fan. We watch each and every game up here. I wouldn't have touched that line. Martinez, you would have figured, would have shut down that Phillies lineup, but just couldn't get anything going. Another good pitching effort from Aaron Nola. Last night, Pavetta gave the Phillies a good six innings as well. Yeah. I don't know if it's more of an indicator, Pete, as the Philadelphia Phillies, as opposed to to what the St. Louis Bats are not doing at this time. Unreal. Someone was uh, someone made a comment in my morning show today that every time I bet against the Phillies with a big play, those are the days that they that they win. They've won two games out of their past like 16 games and both of those days I was against them including uh, the big uh, game where they uh, beat Chris Sale as a big home underdog. All right, Donnie Wrightside, I'm happy to have you with us. Uh, and also, it is funny that you talked about Cleveland Bra the Cleveland Browns because uh, in my uh, in my show uh, into the weekend with Bet DSI uh, last year, Brent told us every week the uh, the Browns were uh, were a side that attracted sharp action, and you know they lost way more often than they than they won. And I kept every time I kept I was like, who are these sharps that are betting this week in and week out? Maybe you should take them off the sharp list. But he was like, no, nope, they like them. And uh, so you're telling me the sharp action actually is like has been betting the Phillies in their current losing stretch? Yeah, I mean, most people try to get proactive and get ahead of the line, so to speak. Right. And if you're looking at a getaway day in Major League Baseball, Pete, one of the quirky things always that you want to take a look at is a day baseball game where the away team is heading out of town. Yes. That was one of those indicators today. Aaron Nola, again, pitched very well right up until the solo home run that he did give up. But again, watching the Phillies on the base pass, error after error, mistake after mistake, it's amazing that they actually won a ball game. I'm shocked at this point. When you look at their overall record compared to the rest of Major League Baseball, yeah. it's astounding how far the Phillies have fallen. Absolutely. Well, we are going to talk about them uh, coming up uh, in uh, in their upcoming series against Arizona. We're going to talk about that in a second. But actually, that just to, well, before we get into that that getaway day point that you just made, I I understand that. I agree with that. I mentioned that in the morning show. I said I don't like to bet on road favorites on getaway day. And yet I did it anyway, and I took a loss for it. All right. So, Donnie Wrightside, let's talk about to the upcoming series this weekend in MLB. The first one I want to ask you about, kind of an interesting series, uh, Texas at the Yankees. Now, the Yankees, of course, a great team this year. And for a lot of, of, of this season leading up to uh, their recent series, they seem to be undervalued. They were not priced as a juggernaut like they often were in years past when they had maybe an overvalued team. Uh, they're, as, as a consequence, they have a plus 15% ROI record at home on the year. Uh, but in this last series against uh, the Angels, we saw their lines take a huge jump with Pineda starting. Uh, they were, of course, they opened in like around minus 240 or something. Then today with uh, with Severino, they're again in the mid 200s. And, uh, you know, at first glance, I was thinking that they might be a, a good bet uh, in this upcoming series against Texas. But not if you're seeing minus 200 with uh, with crappy starting pitching, uh, you know, all series long. What's your take on Texas and the Yankees? You think the Yankees are going to continue to have good value at home going forward as they have up till now? Yeah, Yankees have played well all season long, Pete, at home, to the surprise of not many. Coming into the season, most didn't think that the Yankees would be a front runner, be in the lead at the division, because they were sort of in that mix, bringing up the young guys, you know, trying to mix in the veterans just to see what you have. But the emergence of Aaron Judge, uh, Hicks has played very good, mm -hmm. Sanchez also, those young guys infusing that lineup. If we take a look at the New York Yankees at home, Pete, 23 and 10, the one thing that they're going to have a nice little advantage over is Texas doesn't play quite as well on the road at 14 and 19 overall. The way the pitching matchups set up here for us, if you look at 
in that first option there, it's going to be Darvish and Tanaka. Tanaka, I mean, completely stay away from this point. Fade material. But if you look at the overnight lines already coming out, Pete, Tanaka's actually coming in at 119 here at Chris. So they're opening them as an actual favorite. You know the betting public's going to love taking you Darvish here. Great start versus Houston. He was lumped up a little bit in his last start out. But if we look at Tanaka overall, Pete, is that somebody to lead a series that you're going to put out in front of those Texas bats and be comfortable with that short porch in right field no. at Yankee Stadium there? No, I can answer that. That's a no. Yeah. So at first I was thinking about maybe uh, that the Yankees might have some value in this series, but now looking at the pitching matchup, I'm thinking it actually might be a good series to look at the overs because Kanaka against Darvish, who was a little off in his last start. Then you have Bebens Dirks, very hittable against Sessa on Saturday, who wasn't that great in the minors, and then Pineda against Martinez. So now I'm starting to think that maybe this is a series to look to the um to look for overs. All right, the next series that I want to talk about is uh, Baltimore at Tampa Bay, and Baltimore, of course, a team with an extremely stark home road dichotomy, right? One of the best teams in baseball, I think actually number two at home, and one of the worst teams in baseball on the road. Minus 35% ROI on the road for Baltimore. Tampa Bay's been a good team at home, plus 7% ROI overall uh, at home, and, uh, you know, Baltimore is going to be traveling from home with no rest, Tampa Bay remaining at home, and with an off day, um, and looking at the pitching matchups, I like them all favoring a Tampa Bay. I'm thinking Tampa Bay might be a good bet uh, just in this series to win the series and in each game on their money lines. What do you think? Pete, I completely agree yeah. with you. You can't get two different matchups here to go your way if you're looking at overall pitching matchups. Look at him and as an archer. Clear favorite, and we know how well that Tampa plays at home. Second game, Bunday versus Faria. Faria's been fantastic, Pete. Three straight, very good starts to open the season. Those Oriole bats haven't quite seen him yet. He's going to catch them by surprise. Another advantage. And look at the last game. Odorizzi, that steady guy on the mound. You know Pete is going to give you five, six, seven innings, three earned runs. And Tillman has been a complete mess. I'm not big on betting overall series there. But if you're looking at there's some kind of price, Pete, on a sweep, yeah. the Orioles just come in floundering. I made a joke a little while ago that right now the Orioles are that 747 in midair with both engines out. Mm -hmm. What a great way to bet against them since they're going on the road against a team that plays markedly better at home. And every one of these pitching matchups, Pete, really favors the, the uh, Tampa Bay Rays. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking as well. And I just have a, f have a feeling that we're not going to get – Terribly huge uh, home favorite lines here uh, for Tampa Bay, even against uh, Chris Tillman on Sunday. We'll see what those lines are. Then the next series I want to ask you about, another one's very interesting here because of the home road splits, right? Minnesota at Cleveland. Minnesota, of course, uh, plus 47% ROI on the road. That is tops in baseball. And Cleveland, for as great as their lineup is and as, as, as impressive as they look recently, still minus 24% ROI at home. That is the second worst overall in baseball. My first question to you is, uh, in a series like this, do you look at those numbers and do you think there's something fundamental there or do you think it's kind of fluky and basically throw them out? I think it's a little bit fluky here, mm -hmm. Pete, because if you take a look at Minnesota as a whole, as a ball club, they weren't supposed to be in this you know, division race even this late into the season. So taking a look at a road record as staunch differently as it is at home for the Twins, it's kind of amazing to look at. One would think that regression is going to be on the way for the Twins at home. If you joked around and you asked both of these ball clubs where you would like this game to be played at, the Twins would probably say, great, let's keep it in the road. But then again, the Indians would say, let's take it on the road. They're actually a better team technically overall with their record. Even if you look at the pitching matchups coming, in. You got two five ERA guys with Mejia and Bauer to start the season. Gibson, who has actually had some decent starts over the past four to five that he has yeah. versus Kluber. But if you wind up there, Santana, as well as he's pitched over the season, Pete, leaking a little bit of oil now versus Tomlin. It's going to be an interesting series. You might even look at Minnesota. If you're looking at taking a dog here, they're going to be a decided dog. Not bad to maybe take two out of three versus Cleveland here, possibly. Oh, really? So so you actually think that those uh, that those uh, uh, that the road numbers for Cleveland, for, for Minnesota, and the home numbers for Cleveland are somewhat uh, 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 meaningful because I'm looking at this series and I'm thinking just throw them out and, and lean towards Cleveland here. But you're you're th you're thinking that Minnesota might have. To I'm die. actually thinking a little bit the over only because Pete, I like the way Minnesota does play on the road. But also if you look at the pitching matchups, I mean Kluber has been very good. Yeah. One would think he's going to be heavily favored in that game too. Yeah. But if we look at game one and game three, Pete, they're almost flips of the coin on who can win. If Minnesota bats get hot, stay hot on the road. If they take game one, I'm thinking they could possibly take game three as well. So just as one of those long dog shots there. I might be taking the Minnesota Twins yeah. here looking at a future All right, place. well, we'll see what the lines are. It's interesting because Bauer has faced the Twins three times this year. All three were decent starts, and Santana's yes, definitely been regressing, and I'm thinking he might continue his regression here. So I'm leaning Cleveland here, but again, of course, uh, yeah, and I'm definitely leaning up Cleveland with the Kluber start, but not if it's minus 260 or whatever it is. We're going to have to see what the uh, what the line will be for uh, for that one. It'll be interesting for sure. The next uh, series I want to talk about is Oakland at the White Sox. Oakland, another team that has a stark, stark uh, home road dichotomy. 
economy. Oakland is minus 41% overall on the road. Great record at home, but terrible on the road. And the White Sox are actually a little bit under the radar. They've been one of the better teams uh, in baseball at home, plus 18% ROI. That's, I believe, uh, third best in all of baseball. Looking at the starting pitching matchups, it's a little bit iffy, though, right? Holland uh, is starting on Sunday. He's definitely been uh, been getting been regressing in a major way. Then James Shields starting on Saturday. What to expect from him? Not exactly sure. Pelfrey starting on Friday. His last start was surprisingly good. He's been kind of decent his past five or six starts, but, you know, he doesn't quite inspire a lot of uh, confidence here, but it's hard to ignore those home road numbers uh, for Oakland and the White Sox, right? Absolutely. Oakland, abysmal on the road. The next series we're going to talk about there is the Philadelphia Phillies in yeah. that same category to me. Absolutely unbettable. If you take a look at the pitching matchups here, when you look at Mike Pelfrey, what usually comes to mind? Gas can, five earned runs, six earned runs, home runs. Not the case, especially in the past five to six outings. His ERA, surprisingly, around three and a half overall for the season. Jarrell Cotton going on the road as a young pitcher. You don't quite know what you get. You know, three, four, five, six strikeouts. But he's one of those type of guys, Pete, that can go six innings, could go three innings. You're not quite knowing who you get. I would lean towards the um, veteran there and Pelfrey in there. On the second one, you have Gossett, young guy, good start. One bad start, also backing up against Shields, coming off of the disabled list. He did look decent in his first outing back. I would lean again towards the White Sox. And that one, the last one there. The problem I have with Sonny Gray, love the kid's talent, but you saw from his last start, Pete, there was an errant tweet that went out before the game started that Sonny Gray had actually been pulled and scratched from his start. You know, that circulates around the locker room. Somebody's checking Twitter. Sonny, looks like you're about to be traded. And he goes into a funk and has a terrible mm. outing. <laughs> one players that are pitching that may be moving on, does it get in their head? That's going to be a tough start. I like Sonny Gray, but I don't know what type of mind games are being played right now in that holding pattern. Am I staying or am I going here? Yeah, that is kind of a weird series. I'm definitely leaning White Sox uh, on Friday with Pelfrey. The other two games, a little bit more dicey. We'll see uh, how, the, yeah. how the series uh, unfolds and what those lines are. Now let's talk about maybe the most interesting series um, of the weekend, and that's Philadelphia at Arizona. Philadelphia, the worst road team in uh, MLB in terms of ROI, going on the road against Arizona, the best home team in MLB in terms of ROI, number one against number 30. Uh, what do you think? Do you think that Arizona is just going to be like a minus 250 favorite in every game here and that they're going to be overvalued? Or do you think that uh, those um, ROI trends will continue and Arizona will actually be a great bet in this series? I think Arizona's going to win the series, Pete, but I do think they are going to be overvalued mm -hmm. just because the eye-popping stats. The public is not about to bet the Phillies and especially betting them on the road. I made a little bit a joke here earlier to a couple of one of my friends when I saw tomorrow the Phillies pitching matchup. They're going against Corbin, who's had a terrible season so yes. far, but the Phillies don't know who they're actually pitching, so it's listed as TBD, and I think that's actually Pete, the best option for the Philadelphia <laughs> Phillies to maybe not even throw a pitcher out the way they've been. Game two is an interesting one to look at, though. Robbie Ray... What a fantastic season he's had, both home and away. He's had home struggles in the past, but has seen to got it together. Ben Lively is the one pitcher that's almost like that bulldog. Four straight quality starts for the Phillies in a season that's been in turmoil, has been amazing. Looking at Sunday, I don't really know what you get out of Jeremy Hellickson anymore. You had a very good April, maybe half of May. He's regressed, certainly, from that standpoint. Granke's going to be on the mound. You can look for that, again, probably a minus 200 or higher with Granke. The one thing that I struggle with there is when Arizona is going to get past the starting pitching and get to that Phillies bullpen, it could get yes. ugly. If you look at the games that they've been playing, especially at home, that team can hit and the Phillies can't get anybody out late in the innings. Please. All right. Uh, look, I'll tell you my thing. Maybe it's a, the, the super square obvious way of looking at this, but I think Arizona wins at least three out of these four games and, uh, you know, obviously they're not going to be a minus 300 favorite in every game. So I think if you just flat bet Arizona in all four of these games, you'll come out profitable by Sunday. We shall see. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it all uh, turns out. All right. And, uh, and then the only other thing that I want to definitely want to get to is the return of Felix Hernandez on Friday right? Not the easiest assignment in the world facing a Houston on the road. Houston, of course, uh, crushes righties. They're great on the road offensively. Uh, you know, Felix Hernandez, his rehab start started out a little bit shaky. His last rehab start was good. I'm not a believer in him to start, uh, although I'm not a believer in Musgrove either. So maybe we look to an over on Friday in Houston, Seattle. What's your take on the return of Felix Hernandez? Donnie oh. Wrightside. Yep. 
I'm very interested in the way Felix Hernandez is going to come back. We all know that his velocity has been down. Yes. I mean, it's not King Felix from about six to seven years ago. This is a guy that's learning how to pitch again, so to speak. We talked on the roundtable early in the week. Mark Lathrop was on. He brought up some very good points. But it's one of those holding patterns I'm waiting with Seattle as a team. Iwakuma is going to be coming back soon. You know, maybe Drew Smiley comes in down the road. This team can hit Gene Segura back in the leadoff spot there, the engine that's going to make that offense go. They're still hanging around, Pete, in that wild card role. You can get a boost in the arm because I don't think in Major League Baseball – outside of the Mets, that you've seen a starting rotation decimated with injuries like the Mariners have been. It's going to be nice to get those starters back. They're going to give the bullpen some help. Maybe these guys can go six, seven, and eight innings instead of giving the short starts there. I'm interesting to see how Seattle progresses as the season goes, Pete, but I'm very interested, as you said, in King Felix coming back to see if he can help bolster that team because just being a leader in the locker room might go a long way as well. All right, so you're just going to wait and see basically when it comes to Felix. I'm going to wait and see. You're going to wait and see. All right, yeah. want to make a one correction. I did say that the, that the Arizona Philly series was a four-game series. It's only a three-game series. That was just a, a mind blip that I had there. So, But again, I believe that Arizona is probably likely to, very likely to win two out of those three or sweep and uh, probably going to be a good bet in that series, even though it uh, might be a square way of looking at things. Donnie, right side, thanks so much for filling in today. Great analysis as, uh, as expected. Thanks, Pete. Appreciate the time. Let's do it again. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now not to mention a visit to our industry leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.